Hello, everyone. Welcome. I see some familiar faces. Hello. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Olshan. I'm the program manager of High School to Art School, among some other initiatives at Queens Council of the Arts. Um, welcome to Finances for Emerging Artists. Uh, designed in particular for high school art school alums, as well as emerging artists writ large. Um, we're just gonna give it a couple moments, couple beats for people to um, join us on the Zoom call. But in the meantime, please introduce yourself in the chat. Um, if you could drop name, pronouns, what you're doing now. So maybe that's the college you go to or your job title, as well as any social media handles you wanna share, that would be great. Okay, um, so as you, yes, please encourage you, really encourage you all to use the chat and introduce yourself. Some of you um, went to high school to art school together, right? Um, and some of you um, will have a chance to get to know each other and network a little bit later on in the evening. Um, so I wanted to um, first just start off by uh, getting a sense of who is in the room. Um, so if we could do just like a quick Zoom style exercise, either using the raise hand feature, if you go to the bottom right under reactions, there's a little raise hand like that. Or if you don't wanna mess with all that, you can just physically raise your hand on um, a video call. Um, can you all, can you raise your hand if you uh, graduated from the high school art school program? Yes, hi. Hi, Aurora. Hi, Sally. Hi, good to see you. Okay, put your hands down now and raise them again if you are from Queens. A few people, okay. Okay, put your hands down and raise your hands if um, you are if the idea of talking about money really stresses you out. Couple of people, yeah. Okay, put your hands down and raise your hand if you are currently in college. Okay, and then raise your hand if you have, if you're still in high school and are planning to, or have yet to go into college? Couple people. Okay, and then last question. Um, has anyone in the room already graduated from college? No, okay, so pretty much everyone, maybe one person. Okay, so most people are in the place where they're um, thinking about how to finance their college career, which is perfect. Um, so a little bit about how we're gonna spend our time tonight. Um, thank you for making the time to join us on this rainy Thursday afternoon. Um, essentially, we are going to spend this evening um, building financial skills um, with our guests for the evening, which I'll introduce in a moment. Um, but essentially, this virtual workshop is designed to help you tackle the fundamentals of money management um, from sort of thinking about the what ifs in life as you navigate art school and begin your creative career. Uh, we're gonna cover a host of different topics um, from the fundamentals of budgeting to how to think about and responsibly manage any debt you might've taken on for your arts education. Um, we're also going to dive into thinking about your short and your long-term goals 
um, as well as just briefly touch upon what it may mean for you all to consider entrepreneurship and be your own boss, whether that approach uh, or career path might be right for you. Um, so we hope that you leave tonight's workshop with like empowered with more information to help you make wise financial decisions um, and you know, uh, empowered to build a financial future alongside your chosen career. And if nothing else, uh, this is a chance for you all to meet your fellow high school art school alums. We've dedicated a portion of the very end of the session um, for networking and more individualized breakout rooms where you all can get to know each other. So um, without further ado, I am really pleased to introduce our workshop leaders and guests for this evening, um, Flushing Bank. So uh, Flushing Bank has been an amazing partner for QCA um, and has graciously agreed to lead us in this conversation about um, financial literacy. And so uh, presenting this evening and guiding us through the workshop, we have Kathy Costas, and you all can sort of wave as I introduce you, uh, who serves uh, not only as a board member for Queens Council in the Arts, but also a CRA officer, um, which stands for Community Reinvestment Act, which I learned recently. Essentially what that means is the person in the bank responsible for uh, supporting community programming like high school art school. Um, and then Kathy's team uh, is, we're also joined by Kathy's team members Annie Tom, Flushing Bank Casino Branch Manager, as well as Kenny Wihaya, Flushing Bank Springfield Branch Manager. So they are local in Queens. Um, and so I'm just going to turn the floor over to the three of you to take us away for tonight's workshop. Thank you so much for being here. Great, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And very, very nice to meet everybody this evening. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Wanted to be open and um, and allow you to ask questions as we go through the presentation. I think it's very very important information. So um, I'm going to just start right here. So we have we have a lot to to pack into the time that we're going to be together. And feel free to either put questions in the chat or 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 just ask them out verbally. So again, this is from Flushing Bank, and it's in collaboration with our. Queens Council of the Arts, um, you know, director Kelly, who is fantastic, um, running the high school to art school program. So I'm going to just move forward. This is obviously for our finances for our emerging artists. Um, and let me just get to this first page here. So our objectives, uh, really the, and Kelly mentioned this before, what, the what ifs as you navigate you know, art school and the beginning of your career. Um, some of the things to think about, make a budget, be organized and try to stick to it. Uh, short and long-term goals. How does your financial health affect your goals? Uh, we call it financial health, financial skill building, something that people do throughout their entire lifetime. So it's really important to start to get a good handle on it early. Um, understanding uh, some, some of the implications of college debt um, paying, how to pay off college debt, some things to consider. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna touch on that. Um, some interesting timeframes that you should, you should be aware of. Credit cards, how to manage them. What is a FICO score? If you don't know yet, uh, it's really good to know that as you move forward in your life. Um, and if you have a thought about being your own boss and being an entrepreneur one day, some things to consider there. So I'm gonna just shift into the next page now and go forward to why create a spending plan. So this is just a, a short caption on somebody who ran out of money. Um, uh, he ran out of money, he can't get pizza. Um, his, his, his fellow student you know, advises him that he should develop a spending plan. And he, you know, he basically says, how can I develop a spending plan? So we're going to go through all of that. Um, we're, going to, we're going to talk about keeping track of your daily spending. Determine what your monthly income and expenses are. Um, really the month before they're due. That's really the way to, to, for proper financial planning. Um, what are ways you can decrease your spending? And what are ways that you can increase your income? 
Does anybody have any thoughts on that? You know, ways to decrease your spending or ways to increase your income? Anybody want to interject now? We have a small group here, so feel free to just uh, unmute yourself and contribute verbally, or you all can uh, put your answers in the chat, either one. Absolutely. Okay, I'll move forward and... Oh, actually, Kathy, we have people raising their hands. Do we? Sarah. Oh, perfect. Fantastic. Sarah, do you have an idea about how to decrease spending? Um, I think something that helped me, because uh, I've been trying to get better at it, is um, sometimes I'm a little bit impulsive and I've been keeping track of my impulse buys and um, try returning them or when possible, like usually it's like specific routes and I do like I'm bored and I do impulse buys or whatever and I keep track of them. So um, I think it's helped me be more conscious and do less impulse buying. So that helped me like, honestly, like it decrease a little bit of my spending. That's sure. fantastic. That's, that's, that's excellent. So to think about it, you know, maybe you made a purchase and maybe it was a, maybe it was an impulse buy on Amazon, right? And, and something that you thought about and say, well, do I really need that? You know, maybe I have some bills to pay next week. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. So is there a couple other raised hands? I see, uh, Ugo, you have a, you have a thought? Yeah, um, it was basically the same thing um, as who said before me. I'm, I'm not so certain who talked about that. Um, but mainly it's about like taking what's cost effective and like determining what is better for you in the long run. Is getting this thing going to help me in the long run or is it just going to be a satisfactory um, short term um, enjoyment? So that's somewhat how I normally interpret um, my spending. Like if it's going to be like good for me in the long run or if it's just a short term. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, we have somebody here in the chat um, who mentioned um, increase your income. You can, to increase your income, you can develop a small business online or a side hustle. Also to degre decrease um, spending. Think about if you could buy that specific item twice if you can't, if you can't, you shouldn't buy it. Okay, great. Also buy what's important. Very good. That's great. That's every, that's great. Anybody else, um, anybody else has their hand raised? Aurora, you have your hand raised or you did? Yeah, I was going to add in like, um, considering like needs versus wants. Um, I coupon a lot. Right. So I try that's to be great. conscious of like, if I, if I need something, I'll get it on sale. I'll get it in a value pack. I'll try to like manage my money in a way where I can get more out of what I'm like using. That's fantastic. Those are great, all great points. Fantastic. All right, great. So let's move on to, again, you just hit on it. What's the difference between a need and a want? So that might be something that, um, you know, obviously, you, you know, you, you need to pay for certain things um, that are uh, that are important, that are that are fixed, um, and maybe you want to purchase something on Amazon or Netflix or some or or you know you want to you know you want something but you really don't need it at that point. So the whole you know the point of this is to make sure that if you put something aside for those items, um, knowing that you have enough to cover your your true expenses is the most is the best way to approach it. Um, do you know where your money goes each month? So do you, do you have it written down? If you were to think back, and we just had another class with, with um, beginning college students last week, um, you know, and we said, think back two weeks. Do you remember what you spent your money on? It's so hard to do for anybody to think about, you know, to know what they spent their money on exactly over the past two weeks or the past month. It's hard to do. So if you, if you can use an app um, or you can use a form, you know, maybe you want to write it down, whatever is, whatever is comfortable for you. So you really want to control your money, understand where, where your money goes and keep a personal spending diary. 
So I think that, um, you know, and your personal spending diary, you know, these days is, is really finding a good app that you like too. Or you could create an Excel sheet. Um, determine incomes and, determining income and expenses. So income is obviously money that comes to you. Um, and I think you guys know this, jobs, um, allowances, art scholarships and grants, that's all income. Maybe there's other sources of income you get as well. Expenses would be items that you spend money on, including bills that are, you know, your cell phone bill, um, you know, book, you know, you know, your expenses with college, book bills, um, transportation expenses. And then, you know, of course, everybody has to enjoy life. So entertainment too. So you want to make sure that you, that you are planning ahead. Um, so what does it look like when you, when you are, what is what does it look like when you're really earning income? So how does it, what is it really, when you get a paycheck, you have a gross income, less deductions, gives you your net income. So we'll just, you know, briefly look at your, your, obviously your, your, your taxes, your social security, everything that comes out of your paycheck. And here's just a quick example of somebody who works um, a side job while she's in college. Um, she, her gross earnings is $160 and her deductions that have to come out of that paycheck leaves her with what, $121. So it's something just to, it's something to really consider. It's really your net your net income that's that would you that you want to be looking at. Kathy, can I chime in here? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, you showed an example that uh, looks more, you know, like if you're re working for an organization, an institution, you're getting a bi-weekly paycheck. Um, but also just to give an example of, let's say that you're selling art objects, you're a mm -hmm. painter, and you're selling paintings. Um, for example, I track all the gross income um, would be the total amount of sales that you receive if you sell a painting for $3,000, but you have to factor in all of the expenses that it took for you to make the thing. So maybe that's right. art supplies or a studio. And so the, mm -hmm. gross, the total amount of money in, but then the net is more like the way people typically use the term profit, like how much money you actually made off of that endeavor or transaction. Mm -hmm. Great point. That's so important to know, that, to, to realize, you know, what did you really make on it? That's great. That's fantastic, Kelly. So fixed expenses, um, you know, they, they don't change from month to month. An example would be probably your art supplies. That's a monthly pro expense for you. Um, oh, that's spelled wrong. Transportation costs, um, savings. Why savings? And we're going to get into why is that a monthly expense? Does that make sense? But we're going to we're going to we're going to go over that in the next slide. Um, why would savings be considered something that is fixed as an expense? Uh, flexible expenses might change from month to month. Would be could be electricity, it could be food, clothing, it could be what you're spending on entertainment app, apps. So this is where we talk about savings. This is just an example of a monthly payment schedule. So somebody's wages, let's say, would be, and in your case, maybe it's not, as Kelly was pointing out, it's not, it's not wages in the sense of working for, from, for a, a corporate environment. Um, you're independent consultants, you're independent artists. It's, it's, it's maybe, it's a different type of, um, it's a different type of payment scale, but Still coming out of your net income, less that is your, you, if you're going to put money aside, you want to immediately sweep it aside is something that you're thinking about each month that's fixed, that, that you're not going to be spending. So it's, it's completely moved. So if it's $25 a month, great. Over, over months and over a couple of years, $25 a month will add up. Um, maybe you can eventually save more. Uh, maybe you can eventually put it into something that um, that produces an interest or 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 uh, you know you'll find another vehicle to invest it in but car payment uh, we live in the city so generally a car payment wouldn't be something but it could be your insurances you might have insurance if you if you have um, if you have an apartment you still might have insurance in the apartment personal expenses cell phone credit cards loans entertainment so again we why do we say um, 
you know, savings is on the first line because we want when when we're able to save you should be able to put that money in a savings account before you pay your bills and spend your money for, for the month. Otherwise you might not be able to accomplish your savings goal. And maybe you do have a savings goal because you think, you know, I would like to open up my own business one day. I'd like to start to save some money. Um, so, so there's a lot of reasons for a savings goal. Uh, why should you assign early due dates to your food transportation and, and essential expenses? You need money for expenses throughout the month. Therefore, it's important to set aside the, the money early and spend it wisely so that it will last throughout the entire month. If you do this, you'll be able to make sure you, you're spending your money wisely and you won't run out. So this is an example. Again, this is you, you could put it on a calendar. It's best to use a great app. Um, there's a lot of apps out there. Um, just to give you an idea of when things are due, you can obviously, you can also um, use your, um, you know, use your, your, your bank apps to a certain extent. You know, you can look, you could, you could see what's coming out in bill pay if you're paying something automatically. Um, and will you have the funds to swipe that credit card to purchase those art supplies? So if you plan it out and you, and you schedule your, you schedule your expenses before they're due, uh, you'll never run, you know, you won't really won't run short. I see something in the chat here. For, um, yes, please include yourself in the chat. Um, this is one of the reasons why I want to set up a savings account. You absolutely should. Um, and I'll go to the next page here. So here's something that nobody really wants to think about. Come the end of the month, um, you know, you and everything these days is not, you know, you're, you're swiping your card all day. Um, you know, it's contactless usually. If you run into trouble, you can't pay your bills. There's certain things, just to just consider the fact that obviously you could maybe speak to a trusted, um, somebody, a parent or, or somebody else you trust, try to pay your necessary ex expenses first, try to pay off loans first so that you don't get into high interest rate, um, situations where you're paying mostly interest and not the actual loan. And then talk to your creditors as soon as you think you're having a problem making a payment. You never want to look like you're trying to get away from them to not make a payment because that'll cause it, that'll cause a little bit more of a problem than trying to say, I want to set up a payment plan. So that's just words of advice there. I'm going to pass this on to Annie. And Annie is going to go on to our next bit of information. Hi everyone, um, hope everyone can hear me. Um, sounds like most of you are off to a great start with the savings account and budgeting and everything, knowing uh, the difference between what you want and what you need. Um, some things to think about is that college costs a lot. Um, yes, I went through it myself, I, I know. Um, when I went, I actually had a part-time job working at a financial institution. So I actually managed to use my income from work to pay for my uh, four years um, of college education. So um, it was almost like a full-time job, um, 30 hours a week and um, another 20 at studying, but carry my full credits and everything. Um, so other than the cost of college, you have to think about other things. It's food, housing, if you're staying there, um, going out with your friends, as well as books. Um, I was fortunate enough to actually have a scholarship to pay for my books. So um, every semester I was giving $500 for my textbooks. So um, it's not always out there to help you, um, but there are little things here and there that you can look into. For example, my textbook scholarship came from my father's union. It was not from the school. It was something that I can apply for because my father belonged to the International Ladies Garment Union. And um, so do some research. There are definitely little ones here and there that can help you with that. Um, so different things, you know, um, most of you will probably be on an art scholarship and not on an athletic scholarship. Uh, unless there is someone here that's going to go to school on FLX scholarship, please raise your hand. Um, so the next item we're going to go through is pretty much um, 
in addition to tuition, what other costs associated with college? And I think we named them all. Um, it's all of the above, books and supplies. Um, for most of you, that will be very expensive art supply. Um, my boyfriend's daughter is planning to go to art school and he's been spending lots of money on art supplies, um, food and housing, um, personal and medical expenses. If you're not covered by, um, even if you're covered by insurance sometimes, you will still end up with um, medical expenses. Um, we're not all invincible. So um, medical expenses is definitely out there. And that's why you have to um, you know, be aware of all these expenses that might pop up. Now, you can use the cost of college calculator to help you budget tuition, books, fees, and housing. Can anyone name three unexpected expenses right now that you might encounter? Feel free to put it in the chat or raise your hand and tell us. Aurora says medical emergencies. That's one, yes. Answers are not gonna come up. It's what you feel is unexpected sometimes. Uh, for me, right. I recently got into a car accident, so it was repair fees for my car. Dental, okay. Yes, it's never covered, right. not at all. That's right, that's right. So it could be that you could be mm -hmm. that you're right. It could be that you need a new computer at a, yes. you know, you don't unexpectedly. It's a uh, large expense. I was going to say the recent lockdown, all of us um, either have to get a laptop or a computer um, to be able to attend classes sometimes or to be able to um, work. So my apologies, my, my puppy tend to speak when I'm speaking. Um, <laughs> either that or someone's at the door. But uh, yes, most of us had to um, either purchase a laptop or, um, you know, to be able to continue to work. So those, those are three, you know, medical, dental, um, auto repairs, and um, technology are three things that sometimes come up for, you know, um, unexpected expenses. Ooh, that hurt root canal, I saw. <laughs> yeah. And that's always expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, here's an example of the cost of college calculator. Um, you can always create your own. You have, it, it's like, well, you're not taking accounting classes, but if you ever take an accounting class, this is like the T-chart, one size expense, one size income. Um, so what you're doing is you, it's like credit and debits if you wanna look at it that way. Um, the income side of course will be credits and the expense size will be debit. And what it is is hopefully your income side will be more than your expense side. So you go through what the expenses are, again, tuition, books, fees, supplies. Um, on the transportation side, it could be bus, trains, car payment, um, car repair, expense, insurance, fuel costs. Um, most of you are too young to know, but um, a few years back, gasoline was almost $5 a gallon. That can put a dent into your travel by uh, automobile. Housing. Um, most of you will probably not be dealing with mortgage, but dormitory slash rent utilities. Uh, we all have a cell phone, so telephone bill. Food, room and board plan and groceries. Um, depending if you're living with your parents or if you're dorming, um, that costs might be a little more if you're dorming. Um, on the income side, um, on your education, family contribution, is your parents helping you out? Um, do you have friends or relative um, that, well, relative or parents that might have set up some sort of education savings for you? Uh, that could be contributing to part of your income. Financial assistance, um, some of job savings, other savings, um, financial aid grant, um, Pell Grant, the FSBOG. Um, if you were a veteran, there are some sort of service grants, um, teacher education assistance, um, institutional estate. And then you go into the federal loans, which is the Perkins loan, the Straff 
the Stratford loans, um, the parents graduate professional study students loan. Um, I remember getting a Pell Grant of $600, but that's still money. So then again, this is part on the left side is still the debits and on the right side is still the credits, other loans that you can obtain. And then there's, um, I'm going to go on the credit side first, other loans um, and state loans, employment as in, do you have a work study program? Do you have a part-time job? Do you have an off-campus job? Um, scholarships. And is there any other income resources that you can think of? Um, and on the debit side, which is the expenses, health insurance, doctors and prescriptions. Um, hopefully most of you will still fall under your parents' um, insurance um, because I believe most working parents cover, their insurance coverage will cover their children up to 24 if you're in school. Um, personal and miscellaneous, laundry, cleaning, um, drugstore item, clothing. Um, you know, some of us want the latest fashion. So clothing can become a big expense. But from what you guys were saying, needs versus want, um, like I said, you guys are off to a good start. Um, entertainment, going out with friends. Um, and then emergencies and credit card payment, which I think Kenny will go through in, in, a little bit later. Um, that credit card can turn into um, a trap if you don't spend wisely. So income minus your expenses equal what's left of your balance. And hopefully you have some to put into a savings account. Then you're budgeting very wisely. So what question do you have about how to calculate college costs? Because remember there are a lot more to put aside. Anything? Okay. And there's a website down there that says www.studentaid.ed.gov if you want to look into more um, assistance to get on your credit side. So our next item is after you graduate or leave school, if you're not enrolled full-time, they consider that almost leaving school. So after you graduate, leave school or drop below half-time enrollment, you have a grace period before you must start repaying your loan. So you do go through your loan. The Perkins loan has a nine month grace period and Stratford loan has six months. Direct Plus have no grace period. What a grace period mean is it's a break between when you stop going to school and when you have to start paying. So let's say you graduate June, um, 2021. For the Perkins loan, you have till March of 2022 to start paying. For Stratford, it will be January of 2022. Um, so think about that because it starts right away. It, it's the months can go by very quickly. Um, and you'll probably have to start paying, um, in addition to your credit cards, you'll have to start paying off these loans. So the items that were on your credit side when you're going to school is now part of your debit side and it becomes an expense. Um, anyone have any questions right now? So how do you manage your payment? Um, you can choose a repayment plan. Um, some of, most of us probably do a monthly where um, it's broken down into how much per month and for how many years. Um, it might sound very lengthy and it might sound like it's taking forever, but once you have your full-time position, once your job start paying you, you might actually be able to pay it off very quickly. Um, so don't look at oh, wow, I'm paying this much for the next 10 years before this loan is pay off. Um, paying maybe, let's say $60 a month for the next 10 years. is not a lot compared to having to pay $600 a month for the next 10 years. Um, calculate the payment plan, um, speak to somebody. Um, 
research is pros and cons um, before you apply for the loan consolidation, because sometimes if you consolidate, it's one payment instead of multiple um, loans that you have to pay off. And visit the United States Department of Education um, loan data system, because that has a resource that will help you with that. So with the non-federal loan, a private student loan is usually issued by a lender, um, like a major bank or a credit union. Um, those loans often have higher rate and they have fees. Um, they also require a credit check, um, which is what the FICO score is about. So um, that is part of what Kenny will talk about. Um, they don't provide the benefits of federal student loans because there are, <coughs> excuse me, the terms of those loans are probably a little bit higher interest. So you do want to go and see if you can um, qualify for the government loan first before going to um, a financial institution and look for those loans. And um, with basic borrowing, um, you have to be, you know, here's a scenario, um, check out the new fund I bought. Um, it's a great deal, I sign papers and only have to pay $30 a month, but do you know how long you have to pay and how long you have to keep the phone? Um, I think what this is going into is there are sometimes prepayment penalty for some loans that require you to pay for it in 10 years, but if you pay it off prior to that, they will charge you more fees, excuse me. Sorry, I just had to cough. So um, it might be a $90 phone, but if you're paying $30 a month for six months, is that really a deal? Um, so think about that before you um, start, just look at all the terms. Um, don't sign without understanding the terms and agreement of a loan. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> Any questions, anyone? I'll go back, I'll go back a second. Anybody have any questions? Wanna put anything in the chat? Thoughts or concerns? Did you wanna write down any websites? We can always send that to you if you didn't get a chance to write it down. Did I confuse anyone with the debit credit square? I mean, T-chart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. go ahead, go ahead, Kelly. Another from the room, it's mostly students that are in college. How many of you took out, are taking out uh, loans to, to fund your education? Just raise your hand or chime in in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm taking out specifically the Stafford loans of unsubsidized and subsidized. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna move forward to Kenny. All right, hi everyone. So I will be talking about credit cards right now. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that um, I wish I knew about credit cards back when I was first starting college because um, when I first started college, um, we used to have, um, uh, I guess, salespeople that was in the college and that was, that was issuing credit cards from different banks and I did not know much about credit cards. I thought that it was gonna be free money. And obviously I was very, very wrong. Um, it took me a while for me to actually realize that, you know, I have to be very responsible when it comes to your credit. So hopefully after this presentation, you guys will know more about credit cards and, you know, how to use it properly. Okay. So why is good credit important? So credit can be useful in times of emergencies. Um, it's more convenient and safer than carrying a large amount of cash. The reason being is, let's say you carry $100 bills and then you drop it on the middle of the street, that money is pretty much gone. But if you, let's say, have a credit card, then you can always contact your credit card company and just cancel that credit card. Um, it allows you to make a large purchase, such as electronics, and pay for it over time. And it can affect your ability to obtain a job buy or rent a house, or even purchase a new cell phone if you don't pay on time. 
So what is a credit card? So credit cards are a convenient form of borrowing. They provide a revolving line of credit. It requires you to pay the minimum payment each month. And there's also a charge cards, which is something a little bit different than credit cards, which requires you to pay the entire balance every single month. Okay. Now we also have something called a ATM slash debit cards. So ATM and debit cards are tied to your checking account at the bank. So before you use it, make sure that you have money in your checking account before you use those cards. And we also have secured and unsecured credit cards. So most credit cards are unsecured um, and it requires no collateral. So collateral means it's an asset that you promise to give the bank if you do not repay a loan. If you do not currently have a credit history, you should consider to get a secured credit card. Credit card solicitations. So list some of the places where you may be approached or see ads for credit cards. Um, I know some of you are in college already. Um, did you guys ever have anybody that actually tried to sell you a credit card or anything like that? Yes. Oh, wow, there you go. So like I said, like I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, we have to be very, very careful when you apply for those credit cards because um, it, it could be a trap if you do not use it properly. So what type of tactics do creditors use to try and sell you on a credit card? Give you free gifts. <laughs> Gives you free gifts. Sometimes, you know, they give you um, a free AirPods or something like that for you to apply. So just, just be very wary, you know, be cautious before you apply for those credit cards, okay? Uh, so credit card terms. Make sure when you apply for a credit card that you read the disclosure for important credit card terms, such as the annual percentage rates, the APRs, um, the fees, the grace period, and the balance computation method. So what is an APR? It is the cost of borrowing money on a yearly basis. It includes the interest and the fees, the rate may be fixed or variable, and different APR for different types of usage, such as purchases, balance transfers, cash advances, and penalties. Fees. Oh, so I think we have somebody that said something. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> So the fees, we have annual fees. So certain credit cards charges annual fees, um, late fees, over the limit fees, balance transfer fees, cash advance fees, credit limit increase fees, and foreign transaction fees. That's a lot of fees. <laughs> grace period. So grace period is basically to avoid or minimize finance charges by paying your balance in full or making the minimum payment on or before the due date. So many credit card companies never provide a grace period for cash advances or balance transfers. Okay. A credit report. So a credit report tells the creditors who you are, how much that you have, including the school loans, whether you have made payments on time, whether there is negative information about you in public records, how many inquiries are listed in your credit report, so be careful about how many inquiries that you have in your credit report because that will affect your credit score for sure. So every time you every time you 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 know you get an offer for a credit card and you fill out an application and you you take you take that credit card it's a credit inquiry. It's also would be a credit inquiry if you were to uh, sign up for a new cell phone plan or or you're renting or you know any of those things hit your you know hit your credit as an inquiry. Now, normal inquiries are okay, but if there's too many, if they see that there's a ton of inquiries, that actually starts to work against your FICO score, which is something that Kenny's gonna talk about in a couple of slides. So for credit reporting agencies, we have three of the main ones, which is Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So this is a site that you guys could visit in order for you to get your free annual credit report. So you could go to www.annualcreditreport.com. You could give them a call or you could even request it 
via paper mail by using that address below. Kelly said something would be great. I would like if every time you checked your grades online, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It would be like every time you checked your grades online, your grades went down a little bit. Can you imagine that? You're penalized for checking too much, which is so true. It's crazy. They just don't want to, they consider it part of um, who you are, your character. If you're constantly, um, if you're, if somebody's constantly running your, you know, you're doing a credit check on you, um, that means you're just inquiring really about too much credit cards, basically. Yeah, it's counterintuitive. I just, I it is in the, in the chat, but I just wish that someone had told me when I was 18 that just to say, go take out a credit card, take out a small limit credit card, spend a little bit every month and pay it off on time every single month. I think anyone in this room who's 18 to 21, if you don't have a credit card, go out and get one. I think it's, it's, uh, we're taught to believe it's the scary thing about sending money you don't have. I used a debit card for way too long. And then it had ramifications when I didn't have a credit history and I needed to say rent an apartment. Um, so definitely it can really work to your advantage if you do it right. So I would encourage um, all the young artists in this room, if you don't have a credit card to go out and get one. Right. And follow and follow all of these, all, all of these tips here to make sure that you're you're using it correctly and you don't get into trouble because if you use it correctly, it's fantastic. It's something that, you know, if you, as Kelly was saying, you know, you go to rent an apartment, um, you know, even, you know, even, even when you go for certain types of jobs, they actually check your credit history. Um, but if you're thinking about one day, maybe being an entrepreneur, you need to take a small line out for art supplies these, you know, you want to make sure that, that you'll be approved. And these are things that are actually bettering and furthering your career. So, you know, well, a lot of reasons why good credit is so important. Okay. Yes. What is it? So go ahead, go ahead, Kenny. Yes. And also just another thing that I would recommend um, since uh, most of you or some of you have not established a credit score yet or, or a credit, um, a credit report yet you could actually try to get a secured credit card which is um i think right. it's, a, it's a it's a great option um i wish I, like i said I, I wish i knew this when i first started to apply for my first credit card but basically a secured card like i mentioned before it's um you put a collateral so most banks requires maybe three hundred dollars so you put three hundred dollars into a savings account that the bank holds for you and then they will issue you a credit card with a three hundred dollar limit so what you do is every single month, then you can just, um, you pay, you pay, you try to pay it off as much as you can when you use it. And I think it's a great way for you guys to, to, you know, to establish your credit. All right. So let's continue right, so on. Ooh, sorry. Somebody just mentioned, so I would just go back to somebody in the chat who wrote, Valerie said, um, I heard it's best to put bills on credit cards. That way um, it's slowly built over build your credit score over time rather than using it for purchases, but the, would those be considered in inquiries? No, that would not be really considered an inquiry. You're paying, you're, you could, there are some bills that you could pay with a credit card. There are some bills you can't, you know, so, so you have to, um, but if you're using it to pay your bills, maybe um, you're, you're, you're generating a certain number of points, you'll eventually use those points to purchase something as um, one of those rewards, um, maybe an airline ticket, whatever it is, you know, just be careful. And if that's not considered inquiry, it's when you're going to go open something new. Okay. And inquiry only generates when you apply for credit. Um, like um, Kathy said, a purchase is not considered inquiry. Um, it's let's say you get one credit card from one bank and then you go to another bank and try to get another credit card. That right. is another inquiry into credit, and um, that will, you know, affect your score. Right. So I have a question. So you you recommend having like one or two credit cards maximum, not like be ones with people with five credit cards. Like, sorry, can you just repeat that question? I, I so I mean, like one of the recommendations, like to have like one or two maximum credit cards, and not have like three, four, four, right. five credit cards, right? 
because that doesn't actually help your credit score. Well, I think, I believe in my opinion that, you know, it, it really, it, every time you apply for a credit card, you will be, you will be hit with an inquiry on your credit report. So the more inquiry you're going to have on your credit report, that will actually lower your, your credit score, which is what I will talk to you about. So like you mentioned, you know, if you only have two credit cards, that only means two inquiries. However, if you have five credit cards, then you're going to have five inquiries on your, on your uh, credit score. Okay. I have another question. Um, is there a hierarchy of banks? Like, are there some banks that are better or, or like they're seen as better um, for creditors than others, for example? I'm not sure if that makes much sense, my question. Hmm. I mean, I think, are you talking about like certain products that they offer, like their credit um, card? Like an example is I've been trying to get a credit card and I have a bank account at TD Bank. And my mom keeps telling me that TD Bank is not impressive and I need Capital One. So okay. that's very confusing for me. So I was just wondering what, what's your opinion as someone who actually knows these things? Well, I think... It, you know, every bank has their own positive and their negative. So I'm not exactly sure um, about TD Bank or Capital One. I cannot speak for them. However, you know, certain banks are actually running promotions too. So maybe TD Bank is offering a promotion where if you spend a certain amount of money on your credit card, then they might give you a certain amount of points where you could redeem it for gifts and Capital One might not. So it, it really depends, I think. But I think most credit card companies, it's, it's pretty reputable. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, it definitely check the promotions because they do change. Um, they do change monthly. So maybe that Capital One ran a great promotion for a while, and uh, which with maybe great rewards, cashback rewards, things like that. Um, and so maybe that's maybe that's uh, that's something that your mom was was thinking about because it could be that th that they were running a great promotion. I don't know what their promotions are now. But um, I think that's where you should actually research it, do your due diligence, and and go through, see what the offers are, see what see what you're getting for, you know, if you're getting a if you're getting a cash back, or if you or if you're able to use these rewards, let's say to put towards um, some goods, some types of goods. Um, also check to see and make sure that because it has some great rewards. Like some some cards have fantastic rewards as far as miles. You could purchase, you could you you could cash those rewards in for miles, and you could you could travel someplace. However, it may be a higher annual annual um, membership fee. So just you know you could think about think of you you really want to assess it all. And we can't really speak for another bank or another credit card, but really try to do your due diligence and look at that and say, okay, this is great rewards, but the annual fee on this card is is really high so take a look at you know assess that um nerd wallet ranks credit cards yes they do um and i can't you know i think i think that's something you should take a look at what some of what some of uh your peers are looking at all right do we have any more questions I just got a question via uh, direct message that I want to share because it's a good one. I uh, hope that's okay, Kristen. Kristen asks, are there any credit cards that you recommend for your first credit card? Well, like I mentioned before, I think a secured credit card would be, um, would, would be my own advice for, for somebody that is starting out because the reason why is um, when I first got my first credit card, it was actually from a well-known bank and I did not know how to use a credit card at that time and they gave me a, a $3,000 credit limit and for somebody that doesn't know much about credit card and giving me a $3,000 credit limit it was it was pretty overwhelming especially when I kept on uh, using that card and not paying the full balance every single month however with a secured card like I mentioned is you know you put a certain amount of money in a savings account whether it's $300 or $100 and they only give you a limit up to that amount. So that's the reason why you won't be able to go over that limit, whatever it is that you put into that, to, to that account. So it's very safe, but it's still building your credit. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Great. I see. I see. Uh, Annie wrote here. Um, depends on what you want to receive as rewards, and you should also look at the at for no annual fee. That's and again, you're going to see promotions that come out. So make sure you're looking at things like that. Okay, great. So let me go to the next page. And I'm going to talk about a very quickly potentially owning your own business. Um, because as artists, um, you know, many of you may be in business for yourself potentially. So I'm going to just go over this really quickly. Um, things to think about just, you know, do a survey. Ask, ask, ask friends, family, potential customers, other business owners, you know, just get their feedback on their experiences. You know, yes, owning your own business is going to be a lot of hours a week. Um, potential customers, what are they looking for? What, what are they willing to pay for what you are creating? Um, other business owners, you know, maybe, maybe there's other, there's artists that have their own business, you know, maybe they can give you a little bit of information to, you know, um, and, and talk about some of their experiences. So kind of, you're really kind of interviewing and surveying people at this point. Bankers start a relationship with a banker before you need a loan. Um, it could be, you know, at, at that point in time, you may need a small loan to get started. Um, potential partners look for partners who have skills and experiences. And there's just a four step plan um, that you might want to take, you might keep in mind. So you just kind of what they call the back of the napkin, napkin plan. You're just writing down like a pros and cons. You're going to decide whether you're going to go into business for yourself or you're going to work for somebody else. Um, do some preliminary research, set self assessment goals, um, you know, resource plan. What do you need to get started? Um, what type of credit? Uh, do you need an opening opening balance? Um, you know, so you're going to put this on a worksheet. So what kind of, what, what do you need as an opening balance? Um, begin a long-term relationship with the banker. Yes. So we spoke about that. Um, how will I finance my business? Again, you're going to, building a business is a lot of research, but it might be something that's worthwhile to you. Um, you're going to collaborate with bankers. There's also the SBBC, which is a great, great, um, uh, you know, small business development corporation located in many colleges that might even help you with an action plan just to think about these things. How will I manage a healthy business update? Make it a living document that you're constantly, you know, kind of updating. Um, and this is just somebody who has, um, so Sophia had a graphic design planning, this was her planning process. Um, you know, she first had a plan, you know, quick plan, you know, basically back of the napkin, wrote it down, thoughts, ideas, what she wished and dreamed for that business to be like. In her first year, she, you know, she works full-time at a day job. And then in the second year, she's able to work part-time at a day job, you know, at her job. And the other part of the time she's working for herself. So things are starting to, starting to move. Um, and, and eventually maybe she's going to get to the point where she's, a, she's actually able to work for herself full-time. So um, this is just an example, but this is something to think about you know, a lot of people, when they have their own business, they're going to, they they will work uh, a regular day job for, you know, uh, for a little while before they actually, um, you know, go full, you know, op you know, work within their own business um, entirely. And they're, you know, entirely dependent. Their income is, t is entirely dependent on their own business. But listen, at, you know, being an entrepreneur is fantastic. These are just things to think about. Um, Again, here's our information, Annie, Kenny, and myself, our email addresses. Certainly we can, um, if you'd like to contact us, we, you know, we're, we'd like to, uh, you know, try to help out if there's anything that you, any questions that you have along the way. Sometimes when, um, when students leave these sessions, they say, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. I would like to, you know, ask that person another question. I kind of got to know them on the, on the, uh, on the webinar. So certainly reach out to us. Um, and then I'm going to hand, hand it over now back to Kelly. Um, so we can kind of, uh, kind of think about, you know, based on what you learned today, maybe how you would use this to reach your short term goals and your long term goals. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thanks to the whole team at Flushing Bank. Really appreciate you not only taking the time, but um, thinking about 
being like really tailoring this information for artists specifically creative people creative people just uh starting out their careers so thank you for that um as kathy mentioned we are going to transition in a couple minutes into breakout rooms for some networking but before we do that we have a couple more minutes i want to just open the floor up to everyone if you have any questions or even outstanding comments that you want to bring up for the group could be about anything that they covered throughout the presentation. It can be about banking, opening an account, what you need, not just what we talked about. I, I guess um, I'm curious about what is the, um, would do you recommend, I guess it's a little bit more advanced as a question, but do you recommend um, like when you start your freelancing or try starting your business, do you think an LLC is necessary? Or I don't know if that's too advanced of a question or not, sorry. I think that's a great question. Um, you know, you. I think that that would be um, something to consider. I mean, there's gonna, there's, you know, you know, it's, it's a limited liability corporation. So you, you know, it, the, anybody could, you, you're really protecting yourself against any potential liabilities. That's what that is, limited liability corporation. So the, I think that that is, um, I think that this, that's a great option. And you can, you know, you can open up these, you can go online and you can, you can apply for an LLC. So I think, it, I mean, if you're, if you're truly thinking about building a business, I think that that's something to very, very much consider. Thank you, I appreciate it. I would echo that. For those who don't know, LLC stands for Limited Liability Corporation, and it's a great tool. A lot of artists go that route. Um, it's essentially a way to have a sole proprietorship, which means what it sounds like. It's an individual that is representing their business, but kind of a easy way to separate you as an individual from the business that you have, even if that's making art objects or selling them or you pursuing and monetizing your artistic practice, whatever that looks like. Um, another question in the chat from Valeria, how is action plan different from third step business plan? So an action plan, uh, and if, and you know, I could always give you, um, I could also always give you a referral to an SBDC. An action plan is something that's really going to take you through a little bit more of the finances. What, what Annie was starting to talk about before, you know, understanding financial statements. I know that's a scary thing for everybody, right? Especially if you're not in the, if you're not in the, in, in finance, it may not be your, your most enjoyable thought, but to understand, you know, your income statement, your balance sheet, these are, these are, Financial statements is what you will need to provide to the bank one day if you're looking to get a line of credit for your business. So if you're looking to grow and scale your business, it's starting to really move. You're thinking, well, you know what? I need a line of credit. I need, let's say, a $25,000, $50,000 line of credit because I have potentially a contract to create art. And I need to, you know, I need, I need that line of credit for inventory. Or to you know maybe you know you you need to you need to hire another employee. So when you go to the bank, you're going to need to have um, a business plan in place that you're actually that you're actually sticking to. Um, uh, you know you're going to need to be able to provide your tax returns and your and your financial statements. That's the kind of information that's on a whole different level than a three step you know a three step plan. Um, and that's something that I would really tap into some of the local community colleges. Like um, I can tell you that I've worked with a lot of the students over at um, the SBDC at LaGuardia College, for example. They have an SBDC and they could take you through the steps of owning your own business and building out a business plan, a true business plan. Thanks, Kathy. I also wanted to add that for those of you who are really interested in entrepreneurship and new venture creation and might want to do a deeper dive, that's a whole other, you know, evening and conversation. Um, we're going to be, or rather Flushing Bank is going to be dedicating 
more time for that very topic at uh, part two of this session that we have tentatively set, scheduled for August 19th, right, Kathy? Right, correct. So, so we have, um, we do have that scheduled for August 19th and it's, you know, it's a great, it, that would be a great session to kind of go over just a small, it's, it's really um, the information that you would need to be a small business owner. Cause that's where we want to start small business. Um, and you want to get successful at owning a, a small business so that you can eventually, you know, scale up to something that's much larger. I happen to know an artist that built out a business in Long Island City many, many years ago. Um, and it, 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 it's, it became, uh, he's been in Long Island City now for a very long time and it's a specialty. He eventually went from art into specialty framing um, for museums, but he's still an artist. He started as an artist and, and he ended up taking a, a slight change in his career. Um, and he's the, one of the only people that builds certain types of frames of certain museums. Just, you never know where it's gonna take you. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so say at the date for August 19th, you are all invited, of course, uh, and encouraged to come if you want to join us for part two. Um, and that will be a free workshop as well. Um, so we are going to transition now. Um, I, before we transition, again, I just want to say thank you so much to Kathy, Kenny, and Annie for that presentation and for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, so when I say we're going to transition in a moment, I'm going to uh, put everybody in breakout rooms with three to four participants each. And this is just gonna be an opportunity for you all to chat a little bit more on a, in a more intimate setting and get to know some of your fellow high school to art school alums. Um, so in addition, just to introducing yourself and sharing where you are at this stage of your emerging arts career, the question that we'll post to you as Kathy has on the screen um, is how to sort of discuss or reflect on how you plan on using the information that you learned today to reach both your short-term and your long-term goals. Um, and when you uh, are finished chatting amongst yourselves at 7.30, feel free to sign off and uh, have a lovely rest of your evening. It was really great to see you all. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Sending invites now. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Hi. Little Kelly crash or breakout room. Okay, we're just talking about college decisions. Kelly, what do you think? Uh, because Kristen said uh, she's confused on where to go for college. Like, do you have any advice as a professional? What are the options, Kristen? Um, for my advice, um, Oh, you got into to, in, into the top colleges. Oh, oh. So you're deciding where to apply. What year are you in school? You're going to be a senior this fall. Okay. okay. So you're trying to to shape your college list, and you're looking for advice on that. Got it. Okay. Well, the two of you would be really helpful having just gone through this process and discussed it with us ad nauseum. Um, I guess I'll talk about my experience. Um, specifically, there's, um, we had to organize it from like the colleges that we really wanted to go to, but were the most expensive um, to the ones that are at least um, semi-affordable and to the ones that are basically affordable, like all the SUNYs and CUNYs schools. Um, like, Hun like Hunter in Fredonia. Um, so for me, I chose Fredonia um, mainly because I didn't get into SVA before, but I decided on going to Fredonia um, not only because like I like the programs there, but it's also very, very um, like very generous with its cost, with its tuition. Um, and the programs there are honestly amazing considering they have a whole like art center um, dedicated to um, anime dedicated to animation and um, 3D sculptures and modeling. Um, so it really is best to like single out and like 
it's best to apply um, first to all the top schools and all the like top expensive schools and see what type of scholarships and yeah, um, to see what type of scholarships and what type of um, funds that you could get. But if you get into the schools and if you think you can't um, pay off the, um, if you, if you think you can't pay off um, the tuition for those schools, then I think it's best to at least do some, do, at least do some of your years at a different school, um, one that's more um, cost effective. And from there you um, specifically move on to the school that you actually wanted to go to if, if it's much more cost effective with the less amount of years that you have to take, if that all makes sense. Yeah, I totally agree with everything that Ugo said 100%. It's all true. Uh, and also, it's just gonna, you see, you said that you don't feel comfortable applying to like top schools, which you shouldn't. I feel like everyone qualifies and sometimes maybe school programs or just art in our school makes some people feel inferior to others in what they do or like their skill level, although it's just simply all about you and how you're going to fit into that school that you're going to be going to. So uh, every school, every college has um, like a list of ideal people for the spots that they have. So sometimes they need more illustrators, sometimes they need more um, artists, sometimes they need more, I mean, like fine artists or whatever, like they have kind of an ideal list of people. Some of them have to be athletes or musicians. So they need to find those specific people. And sometimes you might think that, oh, I can't really make it to, let's say the new school Pratt or Columbia or whatever is at the top of your list, but really you might end up being that specific person that they're looking for. So make a list of like at least 10 schools. Don't put too many because then you're going to overwhelm yourself with um, like all of the applications because sometimes there are so many additional challenges that they have that you're just not going to be able to handle like 20 applications and perfect them and, you know, finish them fully. So not too few. So maybe like stay between seven to 10 you know 11 schools maybe that uh fit your interests and if they fit your interests it's very likely that they will also accept you because it just matches like what they're looking for so just be confident keep you know applying all good advice yes of course we'll share our contact information oh sure so mm, is our great investors program uh and that we always so I have some generic advice for you, and then I have some more personal advice. The generic advice that we are we always say um, is what Valeria just said, that you should apply to six to ten schools, have a couple backups, a couple reach schools, and then meet. Um, and the second piece that I was going to say, uh, I just muted you, Ugo, for the background noise. Um, so that's the, that's the generic piece. And we encourage everyone to have a reach and to have a meet. Um, but for the schools that you feel like are a stretch, of course you should still apply for them. You don't have anything to lose. Um, other, you're, otherwise you're just gonna wonder for the rest of your life what could be. The only thing that you have to lose is potentially 60 bucks a pop for an application. And um, if that poses an issue, you should come join the high school art school program because we offer, can hook you up with fee waivers. Um, most of our students qualify for fee waivers. Um, but that aside, if you have a school that you feel like is out of your league for whatever reason, out of your league being in quotation marks or so prestigious or so incredible, I would encourage you to really ask yourself why. I think we have a tendency to put schools on a pedestal simply because they are prestigious, because they are competitive, because they have a lot of money. Um, but ask yourself, well, what is it that I know about this school that makes me think that it's superior to another? Is it just because of rankings, which often are bullshit between us? Um, ask yourself, is this actually a better fit for me? Do they have the right um, strong programs that I'm interested in, the right culture, 
professor, student body, et cetera, um, I think that we tend to put, and I did when I was a teenager, um, you know, the likes of Ivy's or really well known, you know, brand schools um, assume that they are better or a superior education when that's really not necessarily the case. Sometimes they're just more no, well known and more expensive. Columbia, Cornell, you. Kristen, does that help? Also, this is like a side note advice for the fee waivers. Usually you can either get them from high school to art school this year. Uh, they actually kind of join the team of actual, uh, like they begin to qualify to actually give, give fee waivers to students, which is really awesome because usually it's just the school advisors that have that. Uh, but also just if you have access to a school advisor, you can um, get the slide room fee waivers from them sometimes. It depends, but usually slide room is the website where you submit your portfolio and it's like $10 per portfolio. So that's like to every school you have to send a portfolio. It just adds up and it ends up being a lot. But usually if you qualify for um, the college board fee waiver, right? The, uh, the website that we applied to college to, you also qualify to a slide room fee waiver, but sometimes teachers or the school, they might not know about all of that stuff because people are applying to regular uh, colleges for law, science, and they don't really know sometimes how the art whole scene works. So you just really might go and tell them like, hey, I might qualify for this fee waiver. Is there a way for me to get it? Because usually it's the advisor that has to sign for you that you qualify. And if you get free lunch, that automatically means that you can uh, qualify for the fee waiver. That's good advice. Yeah, and it sucks sometimes when like these when the schools don't tell you that, um, like, like sometimes it's like because for me um, when I was applying to SVA I didn't know about the um, fee waivers um, specifically sometimes, um, so I so when I applied for one of them um, I had to actually pay the amount, so that was annoying. <laughs> art school program. So Kristen, you're going to be a senior. So you could apply for our fall high school to art school program, um, which walks you through the college list, the college application process, portfolio, fee waivers, scholarships, the whole nine yards. Um, applications will go live um, later next month in August. So if you want to keep an eye on our website, sounds like you would might be interested and certainly it could be a good fit for the program. Both Ugo and Valeria graduated from the fall session. Just uh, also like a pointer for the high school to art school program. It's really like no bias, amazing because it will put like walk you through the entire process that you like I know that I don't want to stress you out because you're going to your senior year soon and it's already overwhelming enough but there's really so many steps to, that just come out of nowhere because you would think that oh I'm just gonna submit an application and that's it no you actually have to uh, send them like transcripts uh, after your first semester and then follow up with the second transcript you need a bunch of recommendation letters and high school to art school really gives you like the opportunity to actually put that into perspective so that you know, like um, you have the deadlines for everything that you didn't even think that you need to prepare to begin with. 
um, like a small ad, but it, it truly, I feel like it made me so ready for college and um, there's financial planning workshops and just everything done for you guys to know what to expect and to, you know, just be ready for, for whatever. And um, <laughs> right. um, another great thing about them is um, specifically with the teachers and how they're willing to help you out throughout the entire process and how they're able to guide you and support you, even when you're like feeling down and you're like doubting yourself about your own capabilities. It's, um, they will honest, they are honestly amazing. And yeah, it's like, like they encourage you to like never give up on your own dreams and on your own goals. And also, um, they're the reason why I um, started my own um, short film um, that I've been working on since last year, traditionally. So yeah, I'm still working on that now, but they're part of the reason why I wanted to start working on this. You guys are so sweet. It's really nice to hear. And yes, Will, I wanted to see your short film. Is it on your Instagram? Yeah, all my work is on my Instagram. Um, you can see all my um, progress on it. I'm currently working on another scene right now. That's amazing. And you have a huge partner. You're partnering with the Astoria Film Festival. Is that what you told me? Yes. Um, How did that even come to be? S-Y-E-P. Um, they're the summer youth employment program. So um, after I applied and I got into that, they um, sent me to Astoria and they saw that I was the animator. So they asked me if I can work on um, making these short films for these nurses um, at this hospital and like detail their experiences with COVID-19 and like how they've been dealing with it. Thank you. So cool. Congratulations. Is this, okay, so I remember been a part of like three different programs um, for like three different art related programs um, with the Bronx team um, summer program. Um, I was working with SVA on the um, climate change film for them and I'm working with Astoria for um, the nursing film. So cool. And thank you, Kristen. You're what, 19? 18. 18 and you already have you know, to socially engage animation projects. It's exciting. It's just, it's so in keeping with what you have been talking about wanting to do. I mean, I've read what, three of your high school art school applications at this point for various sessions. It's just really cool to see it come to fruition because I can see the through line from what you've been talking about wanting to do for so long. That's great. Thank you so much. And I really could not have done any of this without the help of you guys and everybody involved in the program. Well, I will relay the good news to Ben. I'll be proud. All right. Well, it is over time, 7.34. It was really great to see all of you. Thanks for your great questions, Kristen. And hope you can apply for the fall program. And that, yeah, thank you for being here. Lovely to see you both. Appreciate you taking a rainy Thursday evening to talk about art and finance with us. Thank you so much opportunities. Bye guys. Stay in touch. Of course. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay.